Oh my god, hey! Hello! We are outside the Novello Theatre in yes. London's West End where we have just been part of the audience for the live taping of the finale of Mamma Mia! I Have a Dream yeah. on ITV. The search for the West End's next Sophie and Sky in the musical Mamma Mia! as it celebrates its 25th anniversary in the West End and they have just found them! Yes. They have officially crowned the winners. We're going to tell you what happened. Yeah. Okay, let's do this. Oh my god, hey! Welcome back to my theatre-themed YouTube channel. Yes, this is how my voice is going to sound for the entirety of this video. I have this really dreadful cold, which has not been mitigated by the fact that I literally haven't stopped working for the last week. Do you know what I would really benefit from? Ironically, it's like a sunny jet to holiday to somewhere like Corfu. Anyway, if you're wondering who I am and what's happening here, my name is Mickey Joe, and I'm obsessed with all things theatre, which is why I have been very excited to watch Mamma Mia! I Have a Dream on ITV1, the TV show searching for the next actors who will play Sky and Sophie in the musical Mamma Mia! in London's West End as it prepares to celebrate its 25th anniversary. And finally, we know who that is going to be because the finale has recently aired over the weekend and Stevie Doc and Tobias Turley have won the roles of Sophie and Skye, respectively. And I don't know about you all, but I feel a tremendous sense of closure having done all of these recap episodes week in, week out. And I don't know if you've noticed, I'm wearing a slightly different outfit for this one because, you know, you know, I thought I was done. I thought we were finished with this. I hadn't anticipated that I was necessarily going to do a sit-down finale thing. I thought I would just do a vlog at the theatre because I was invited to the finale taping, but I didn't really think that far ahead. It was very hectic, it was very busy, and obviously I couldn't film inside the theatre during because it was like a live TV filming setup. All of which is to say the nice linen shirt I've been wearing for the past few videos uh, has not been washed in time for this one. Uh, so I have this nice Merrily We Roll Along merchandise jumper alternative, which honestly, so much nicer, much warmer. If I'd been wearing this every week, perhaps I wouldn't have a cold right now. But like I said, wasn't necessarily sure if I was going to do a recap for the final, and then I remembered some of the comments from videos. Some of you are watching these recaps from the US without being able to watch the show. So I figured I would have to update you on what happened in the final. We're just going to kind of briefly cover it talk a little bit about the winners, my feelings about it, all my feelings about the whole season now that it's ended, and then much like one third of Dickensian Christmas ghosts, I like to look to the future. So we're going to talk about, you know, uh, musical theatre and television beyond this series. Now if this is the first time you're hearing about this, you can first go and watch all of my other recap videos. We've got like eight weeks of recaps with various different guests here on the channel. You can go and check out all of those. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel, obviously. But for those of you who already have, and already are, let's get straight into this. So I haven't actually sat down and watched the full televised episode because I saw it getting filmed in person. And so I didn't see everything because they cut to pre-recorded footage to facilitate like set changes between different setups that they had at the Novello Theatre on the very garish set of Mamma Mia with the with the blue stripes. Didn't see all of the pre-recorded stuff from Greece and didn't really get the full effect of Zoe Ball's introductory transition moment when she pretended to still be in Greece and then walked out and was actually in the Novello Theatre. We just rehearsed it once with her as an audience so that we didn't like start applauding at the wrong time and then uh, you know we got to be participatory in the actual thing. I was up in the grand circle if anyone saw me on television saw me and Aaron, please let us know. Ellie and Sean were there as well. It also meant I couldn't see the judges from where I was, but I could hear them. And I could hear everything that was happening pretty well. You know, we could still hear all of the performances. The sound wasn't optimised for the theatre. It was definitely optimised for the recording. It was for the benefit of the live TV recording, as you would expect. But we had a little bit of an opening number. I wasn't sure if they would use the same dancers they used on the island back in the summer, and I don't know if they were all exactly the same, but I recognised enough of them that it seemed as though they were. Matt Jordan from Magic Mike Live was there, Amanek, who's currently in The Nutcracker, was there. You may have thought they would use the actual cast of Mamma Mia, but they didn't. They were sitting up with us in the Grand Circle. We introduced the judges on the main stage before they went to go and take their seats in the dress circle. Some of the worst seats in that theatre, I will say, because they were like the side slips. They're great seats for being seen by other people. Horrible for seeing the show. But mostly the evening was about the performances from our four finalists. Now I will say, perhaps controversially, they opened the voting lines before anyone had performed, which does kind of give an advantage to whoever goes first because there is more time for them to get votes, right? And yet what ended up happening were the winners were the people who performed first 
and last. And the fact that Toby performed last and still got a hefty number of votes with the least time to have anyone vote for him seems to dissuade the voting theory. Except there is also a school of thought with things like the Eurovision Song Contest, which has years of statistics, that suggests that first and last are pretty optimal places to perform. Those are some of the most memorable performances to an audience. But I will take my conspiracy tinfoil hat off to tell you that all four of these were great. Let's hear what some of my former co-hosts thought of the evening's performances. Highlight performance of the evening, Ellie Talks Theatre. I think I'm going to give it to Tobias. I think Tobias, I, I was I was kind of like, after I saw Owens, I was like, oh, I don't know, because I'm really like feeling Owen. And then Tobias came out and just delivered that song. Just had like the perfect energy. I love I love how it was like the, the simplest stage one with just him and one backup dancer, because it really allows you to focus on his performance. Just gorgeous and proved exactly why he has won. Faith performance actually was Esme's My Love My Life. Uh, Ellie <laughs> saw so, so me gasp uh, when they announced what song she was singing. She's like, I gay gasped um, because it, it's such a beautiful song and it was it was a stunning rendition. Uh, I think we're going to see her on stage very, very soon. So my favourite was the winner takes it all. I mean, a full part with all four of them singing with fun arrangements that we Mine was too. Before, that had to be the one. And I also find it fun that it's probably the first time I've ever seen people clap along to the winner takes it all. Yeah, that's... <laughs> Trust, rarity. Trust a British audience Literally. on a Sunday night. <laughs> like, yeah. I was like, this is not normal. Suddenly it was a football song. The full part was nice. I actually really like that arrangement. Yeah. You may have heard me agreeing with Aaron. I loved that four part when it takes it all, just the drama of the thing. I also loved the I Have a Dream that was pre-recorded at the beginning. I will say, for weeks we've been comparing their vocal viability for these roles, and nothing shows up the differences in their tone quite like cutting between different performers sustaining the same long note. That was a little bit exposing. But four very different performers, each in their own way, would have been great for these roles. I was prepared to root for anyone in this final. Some of them because they are so obviously suited for the role and could go into it tomorrow and make perfect sense for it and just like have all of the necessary skills just clearly right there. Others because they would actually be an interesting breath of fresh air in the role and they would bring something very different and exciting to it. Both of which I think are actually equally good outcomes. Now, if you've been watching back from the beginning, I picked out Tobias week one as someone who was very strong for Sky. I think there was maybe only one week where he didn't top the power ranking that we did. And I think Owen uh, did that week. That was maybe the first week of solo performances where Owen did Luck Be A Lady from Guys and Dolls. Thereafter, Toby was quite clearly the strongest candidate, gave a fantastic performance on the night, and there was never really any doubt in my mind that he was going to go on to win this final. You know, aside from anything else, aside from how talented he was, he also was very charming on TV. You'll notice he didn't really have much of a good TV narrative storyline. He was just like a hard worker who was pretty competitive and very talented. They tried to, in that last little segment before his final performance, talk about like sporting background, and how he was a singing waiter. Like I said, he was in Heather's right before they filmed this. He's been doing other like singing performances. I don't know how many shifts he'd actually done as a singing waiter because the venue that they showed really only has that on one-off nights. It's not like the Theatre Cafe Diner where it's like their full-time job that they are waitstaff and then singing alongside that. But needless to say, wasn't surprised that Toby ended up winning. Thrilled for him, he did a great job. Entering the final and from the last few recaps, I thought Stevie was going to take it. I think she really had her biggest breakthrough in that acting challenge with Maz Murray where for me, she really held her own the most. Esme was the other really strong actress in that. So again, would have been happy with both of them. On the night at the Novello, I wondered if Esme was just going to begin to take it. Not because they didn't both give fantastic, lovely performances, but because the audiences on these shows have a history of voting for someone who looks like the most obvious fit. Think back to Connie Fisher for Maria and the Sound of Music, Lee Mead for Joseph, Jodie Prenger for Nancy. And it's not that they weren't also really talented, great choices, but it's that the voting public seem a little less likely to divorce themselves from their preconceived notions of what these performers ought to look like. 
Now, given all of that, I think it says something that Stevie still emerged with the most votes and became the nation's Sophie. Simply because most people's understanding of this role is Amanda Seyfried in the movie, who has the long blonde hair, Esme has the long blonde hair, looks more like how you might expect a Sophie to. And they even gave Stevie the song, Thank You For The Music, where she sings, I've been so lucky, I am the girl with golden hair, despite being a brunette. But smartly, the audience at home realized that that is the least important thing in this role and doesn't actually make any kind of a difference to her ability to play the character, so she won. Now, I think over the last few weeks of the program, they had really honed in on each performer's strongest suits and skill sets, and they gave them each a number in the finale that showcased them at their best. Owens was characterful and playful. Tobias had this belty, angsty ballad. Esme was doing like the lovely, soulful, like touching her face, slow choreography around her, sounding beautiful. Stevie's was a little bit more lively with like a little bit more choreo carrying her around and just bright. Everyone was giving their best version of themselves and it didn't feel as though anyone had been burdened with a worse song choice, something I appreciated. But given that this is a show about, you know, singing, acting and dancing, I'm sure you're all asking the very relevant question, you know, how were the outfits? Thoughts on the fashion, Ellie Talks Theatre. The second, the judges appeared towards the back of the novello stage. I was gooped, I gasped, yeah. I gay gasped right at the back there. I was like, what? Yeah. Just gorgeous. Yeah. But they were gorgeous. I, I'm Samantha sorry. Barks unbelievably recently birthed a child yeah. and has the audacity to look like that. I'm like, I could never, I could never. No, no. Talking about general fashion, all four of them slaying very much. Yes. Slaying very much. Yes. I really enjoyed their, uh, the first dresses that they had, the blue, could you, could you the see, blue and the white. Could you see Judy Kramer? I saw glimpses of Judy Kramer. I saw Judy Kramer. Can't tell you what her outfit was, but I saw glimpses of I'm Judy sure Kramer. she looked expensive. Oh yeah, she always does. She always, she always does. does. Always does. Always does. <laughs> a lot of money to be made from Mamma Mia in the West End. It pays for those shoulder pads. Um, but you were saying, you liked first outfits. Oh yeah, the first outfit, like the flowy, the flowy white yeah. and blue ones were yeah. pretty. The theme of the night was like flowy, drapey, linen. Yeah. Like the real winner tonight was linen. Oh yeah. And the colours blue and white. <laughs> We well, had white, an orange moment. White, white has always been Tobias' colour, as we have, as we have found out. <laughs> I'm, can we talk about our fashions? For oh the yeah, evening? sure. Um, I mean, this. If Tobias had walked out in this, I would have been okay with it. I'm giving you like the, the white on white that you enjoy. With there's one yeah, episode where we did nice. this, and you said put one of them in a blazer. Yeah, and I, I actually think that this is great. There I you like go. this. There I you like go. This. I've brought a blazer simply for you. Um, uh, <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> they came out at the end, all because they do this at all of the past shows, like when they were doing Nazis and all these things, they would always put them all in the right outfit at the end, yeah. um, so that whoever wins is then like wearing the right outfit at the end. And so Aaron said, oh, they're like dressed as Sophie and Sky, and I said, are they in those last few outfits? Not sure, but I love saw the show recently. <laughs> saw the show recently, and that's not what they wear. They did remind me of like waiters from the, like, the coastal fish and chips restaurants that I grew up near, like Hot Rocks. They looked like they were ready to go and work a shift. <laughs> Is that a chain? I don't know. Have you ever been to a Hot Rocks? No, I have not. People from around the country. You got a Hot Rocks? Anyone else got a Hot Rocks? I do not have a Hot Rocks. Am I saying that right? It was, it was, it was Bournemouth establishment. Anyway, but that's that's what it was giving me at the very least. Any more fashion thoughts? Uh, just what a great season for fashion. What a thank, great thank you for uh, listening to all of my fashion thoughts this season. The most important thing about Mommy I Have a Dream is my opinion on fashion. Yeah, it's always been about clothes. It's, it's always it's been time. about that. And you know what? The, the winner, the winner for best fashion out of the returning girls, Desmonda. I think Desmonda oh, that is the outfit. fashion winner of the season. If there, is, if there was a crown for fashion, it would go Desmonda. Is Desmonda Miss, saying Miss, every single week? Miss Fashionable Congeniality. Miss Fashion. <laughs> Miss Fashion. Miss Fashion. I'm cutting away from you. You're cut off. <laughs> now, for as long as we've been doing these, we've been talking about the eliminated contestants and manifesting that they will go on to have huge careers on the back of this very public, very mainstream televised platform. And one of the things I most enjoyed about the finale episode was that Zoe Ball disappeared at one point to the Schubert bar to go and catch up with all of the eliminated contestants who were all reunited on that night at the Novello.
And as we were leaving the theatre, I chatted with Sean about what we had learned about each of their immediate professional futures. So Sean, Sean Tossel. Yeah. You are a great supporter and uplifter of like emerging talent. Mm -hmm. One of my favourite things they did was Zoe Ball uh, briefly chatted with the other contestants yes. who had previously been eliminated and were back uh, tonight to support the finalists. Mm -hmm. And they talked about some of them, what they'd got on to do. Now, we'd already said previously that like Maisie was now at drama school as paid for by Judy Kramer. Very lovely. Um, but we, yeah, we had some other exciting news. Yeah. yeah we had Zakiel. Zakiel going into Back, Back to, to the, the Future. future. Well done to you, Zakiel. I'm sure he said like January. Yeah. As well. Not too bad. Which not is soon. Which is it? Which is like not even as part of the cast change. Just going into the show. But that yeah, that's fun role for him. And this is what we said is that we were hoping yes. that it would lead to exciting things for all of them. I can't remember. Did anyone else? Well, obviously, we have Desmonda in Aladdin. Oh, yeah. Yeah. She's fully announced for the tour now. Yes. Obviously, for not Confirmed winning. Confirmed <laughs> to the whole tour. Callum announced that he was going to see... More musicals. Aladdin. And, yeah, see her. <laughs> after, was, like, maybe get some tickets from her. It was implied that he was that he was hoping for cast, right? Yes. Yes. Hey, I mean, listen. Disney Look, front row, that's Gotta do what you gotta do. You gotta, I'm not gonna hold that against anyone. I might, I might be sending a DM. <laughs> I'm trying to think if there are any other insights I can give you from being there as part of the taping. And it just seemed like a pretty standard process. There was a warm up person. We had little sing along moments in the ad breaks. I kind of missed the Jet 2 Holidays song, the Jess Glynn, like the darling on my head. I'm not going to attempt to sing it now. But I, I don't know, it felt weird to be watching an episode of the programme and not to be getting that song, like, multiple times. Honestly, I think they should have brought out Jess Glynn as a surprise from the wings and had her perform that song on the novello stage. That would have been camp and I would have liked it. I will say, like I said, haven't watched this moment back, but the amount of time between Zoe Ball saying she was going to announce who the winners were and then they had this big red light reveal that no one was expecting, so the audience, rather than being a hushed silence, suddenly all went... Oh, and then laughed at themselves for reacting that way. It went on for so long. Those poor contestants had to wait for such a long time. But I loved the way that they congratulated each other and reacted to each other's success. And then all of the other contestants coming on as well and just everyone hugging each other and celebrating. It was the kind of wholesome ending that this program deserved after trying to take this casting competition idea in a sort of a more genuine and a kinder direction the entire time. But like I said, thrilled with the winners, you may be wondering if I have any plans to go and see Stevie and Tobias in the show. And I am hoping to in the new year. They start right at the end of January, I believe on the 29th. I am anticipating that they will probably do a gala. I'm thinking they're probably going to do a gala for the 25th anniversary of the show. Hopefully I might get to go and see that. You know, you never know what press invites come through and all that stuff. Stuff, but the team at Mamma Mia are lovely and wonderful and hopefully I don't think I'll be there for the first performance because like treat it like a preview that's their first time doing the show in front of an audience you don't want people going in who are going to be like appraising it and reviewing you want to give them like their own preview period even though the show is obviously already open and they're joining a cast who have already opened in the show months before but at some point I will be going and I can make a review here on my channel if you would like that talking about Stevie and Tobias's performances in the show and reviewing the show Show. I've never really reviewed Mamma Mia on stage for YouTube. Perhaps that is something you would like to see, tiny people in my camera. The only other thing I want to talk about before my voice completely abandons me is what this has done for the return of musical theatre casting shows on television, because these used to be a very regular fixture. And in the past few years, they've become comparatively sparse. Now, I'm hoping that this might lead to more happening soon. I think they probably do work best with a show that is launching and opening with this being the opening cast like those other programs used to be rather than casting someone to go into an already long running show that if we're being honest, doesn't really need the advertising. Like Mamma Mia was selling well anyway, but this definitely seems to have been produced as a one-off. The team who put this together were the Mamma Mia team and Judy Kramer. And so there's not any other shows that we can expect them to do this with necessarily. I am just willing for us to see them on screens again. I really want these shows to come back and I wonder if a weekly live format 
is more effective. You know, people didn't fully engage with the idea of these being pre-filmed and all up to the judges and shot on location back in the summer. I think like we're seeing with so much immersive and interactive theater now, if you give audiences a chance to engage with the program on a weekly basis rather than only getting to vote once in the finale, then maybe they'll be more likely to tune in week after week. Again, let me know what you think in the comments section down below. And also let me know what kind of shows on the horizon you think a TV casting show might be a good idea for. I don't think it would work for everything, but there certainly are some shows where this might be a great way to find new talent. And again, it has the dual benefit of also promoting the show and promoting all of these performers. So those have been my briefer thoughts about the final episode of Mamma Mia! I Have a Dream. I hope you've enjoyed watching all of these recaps. I hope you've enjoyed watching the series on TV as much as I have. And I hope that everyone is staying safe and that you have a stagey day. For ten more seconds, I'm Mickey Joe Theatre. Oh my god, hey, thanks for watching, have a stagey day. Subscribe! <laughs>